Welcome to New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church Sunday Service. Under the dynamic leadership of Reverend Dr. Lorenzo Neal, we are located at 2202 Decatur Street in the city with Soul, Jackson, Mississippi. Join us online at Facebook, YouTube, or our website, newbethelljacksonms.org. We are a church where God is our Father, Christ is our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit is our Comforter, and humanity is our family. Here are this week's announcements and weekly ministry opportunities. If the stress from the pandemic has been affecting you, let our pastoral counseling ministry help you. Licensed and trained professional counselors are available by appointment. Join us Tuesdays at noon for Bible study with Dr. Neal, streamed live on our church Facebook page. Gain insight into scripture that will bless you throughout the week. Sunday school each Sunday at 9 a.m. by way of teleconference. Call 701-802-5157, enter code 412-1360. Our mission is to minister to the social, spiritual, economical, and physical development of all people. Our vision is to be a church where every person feels loved, welcome, and accepted, where God's word is explained and experienced on every level for every person, when every person strives to be relational, encouraging, authentic, and loving. Welcome to Sunday service. Thank you for joining us. Let's join the service in progress now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. This fourth Sunday of August. We are glad to be in the service of the Lord. If the Lord has been good to you, put those hands together. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. from whom all blessings flow. to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. 
For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Those who plant, are planted in the house of the Lord flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, the place where your glory and honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praises. And we but do so by singing hymn number 283, I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. O oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend, when I kneel in prayer, and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross that narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I cannot reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Let's lift our voices and sing in this great hymn of the church, I am thine, O Lord.
let us pray. And as we go forth in prayer this morning, we want to remember the family of James and Shirley Davis as they lost, uh, Sister Davis lost her brother. Uh, so please be in prayer for uh, their family. We also solicit your prayers on behalf of those victims of gun violence this week. Uh, it's so tragic that it's happening in our city, continue to happen in our city. Pray for those families who have uh, lost their loved ones to gun violence. We pray uh, for those families that lost their loved ones to this tragic virus. As our cases are rising in the state, and hospitalizations are becoming um, overwhelmed, we do solicit your prayers. We pray for those people who are contracted even after being vaccinated. Lord, have mercy this morning. As always, we solicit your prayers on behalf of all of our elected officials. We pray for uh, our, our brothers and sisters first in Haiti who are experiencing so much trauma from natural disaster, the earthquake, the hurricanes, tropical storms. We pray for them, for the families, lost loved ones, for our AME churches that have been destroyed. Have mercy. For those refugees or those persons seeking refuge, not just in Afghanistan, but across this country for those Christians who are losing their lives and families of those Christians in Nigeria, in the Congo, persecution everywhere in this world for those persecuted Christians, have mercy. For our brothers and sisters here at New Bethel, for churches and pastors serving in this community of Georgetown, the city of Jackson, across this country and state, have mercy. And for one another. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Here it is once more and again, blessed Lord, that we come in this sacred moment, in this sacred space, first and foremost asking that you will forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all in unrighteousness. Have mercy. Secondly, we are thankful to you, God, that you allowed us to see another day's journey with we're so grateful, God, that you woke us up this morning, touched us with your finger of love, gave us reasonable portions of health and strength, gave us a sound mind. We thank you today, God. You are so good. Your mercies are everlasting and endures forever. Great is your faithfulness to us. Have mercy this morning, oh God. Have mercy on the children who are in school where COVID virus is infiltrating their bodies and having to quarantine and teachers having to suffer with the anxiety and uncertainty of this school year. Have mercy on those parents also wrestling with the same issues of quarantine and anxiety. Look and have mercy on oh, those families who are dealing with bereavement because they lost someone. We realize that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Have mercy this morning. Be merciful in, in our city, in our state, and in our country. We need you more now than ever before. Look at have mercy in hospital rooms, Father God. Not only where there are COVID patients, but there are cancer patients, there are uh, diabetes patients, there are kidney failure patients. Oh, Lord, have mercy. 
look and have mercy on those long-term care facilities where persons are going because they have no one to give care for them. Have mercy. Have mercy in our prisons, Father God. Somebody somewhere is calling on your name. And only you can meet their needs. Only you can be their redeemer. Only you can be their healer. Only you can be their deliverer. Only you can be their shepherd. There shall not want. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of the struggle we are experiencing, in the midst of the existential crises, you are still God. You are the same yesterday, today, and will remain the same always. That's why we trust you. We know that you are a doctor in the sick room. We know that you're a lawyer in the courtroom. We know that you are our redeemer, a bridge over troubled water, a, a mind regulator, a heart fixer. Have mercy. And we thank you in advance, Father God, for what you're doing and what you will do. I have not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it even entered into the mind of all what you're able to do. But we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Have mercy. This is our prayer. With thanksgiving, knowing that thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and always. People, God said, Amen. And Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Yeah, our prayer. reading would come from Psalm number 34, Psalm number 34, beginning at verse 15, reading down to verse 22. The word of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them of, out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The word of God for the people of God. From all that dwells. From all. of the Decalogue. Hear what Christ your Savior says. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is just like it. You should love your neighbors as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. God is so good. And as they're playing this song, Grateful, take this moment just to reflect on how gracious the Lord has been to you just during this week, just during this month. And just take a moment to lift your hands and just begin to worship Him wherever you are wherever you're watching this, this stream, lift your hands and just begin to worship the Lord. Allow his presence to saturate your space. Allow his glory to fill your sanctuary where you are in this moment. And just let yourself go and re relish in his presence. Relish in his glory. Lift your hands and say thank you. I love you. Whatever you are being led to say and worship the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Worship the Lord and let him know how grateful you are. Because he is good all the time. That's what we say. He's good all the time. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you in this place. We honor you in this moment worship you in this moment because of who you are and because of what you've done. Your grace has always been sufficient for us. Your grace has carried us through. Your, your grace has broke the bonds of shame and, and, and of sin and allowed us to be liberated to worship you, to praise you, to serve you. We thank you in this moment. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Flowing from our hearts are the issues of our heart. It's gratefulness. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on, worship the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Ephesians, chapter 6. We're going to begin reading at verse number 10. And read down to verse number 12, and we're emphasizing verse number 12. I want to strongly encourage you to read the entirety, not just of this chapter, but also of this book of Ephesians if, at your own leisure. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12, you find these words from the New American Standard Bible. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And I want to talk to you this morning from the subject as the Lord allows us and enables and empowers us to do so. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. Amen. Amen. And amen. We are currently experiencing an existential crisis. All of us are in the same predicament, not by choice, but by circumstance. We are watching in real time as institutions that we put trust in are being discredited or being dissolved and in some cases even being redefined by the whims of individual subjection. We are experiencing a crisis like none other. And I'm not just speaking because of the pandemic that seems to be raging on, neither am I speaking on the D 
dissonance that is happening across the spectrum of social and racial interconnections. But I'm speaking of a struggle that is beyond our control but engages every last one of us. We, we, we may not want to think it, but we're seeing crazy stuff happen in real time that one day, one time we only saw on the soap operas. We only saw in the novels, the romantic novels, the science fiction novels that we read. But we're seeing real, real life crises play out in real time media. The American church in and of itself is experiencing a great schism unlike that has the, something that has not been seen since the great schism of the 11th century when the Roman Catholic Church split from the Eastern Orthodox Church and they became separate entities. We are seeing and experiencing things that is really challenging us, not just our physical selves, not just our emotional and mental selves, but even our, our, our spiritual selves. But the good thing I, I know is that as Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, all of this that we are experiencing has a purpose and has an ending point and the ending point is God's glory. Now, I, I know we can't really define what God's glory looks like, but can I tell you what we can say is that God's kingdom is being revealed even in the midst of this craziness that we are experiencing. We are still seeing God's kingdom being revealed here on earth. We're seeing God's will, his permissive and his perfect will being carried out on earth as it is being carried out in heaven. It, be, it is beyond our comprehension and our understanding and in many cases even beyond our own desires. But yet God is being purposeful and intentional in the struggle that we are experiencing in this moment. We don't want to talk about struggle anymore. I, you know, suffering and struggling is not supposed to be for the Christian. That's what some have been saying for some years now. And when people are faced with things like they're experiencing in this present moment, they don't know where to turn. They lose the trust in the people who have communicated those words to them and lose the trust in the God they believe has said the same thing. And they come to the conclusion that I got to fight all by myself. And the truth of the matter is you don't have to fight and you should not be fighting by yourself. But you are in a struggle. You are in a fight. And the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Paul Tillich writes in his book, The Courage to Be, that fear and anxiety have an interdependent distinguished but not separate relationship to crises that we experience. He calls this, he sets this up in an ontological argument. That is the argument of being and existing. Why, why do we experience what we experience as we live, how we live? Why do we go through what we go through? And he sums up that everybody has the same experience of fear and anxiety. And while these two seem to be on separate wavelengths, they, they well, they really are on separate wavelengths. What it, they are really doing is working together to be uh, to make you into the believer you are called to be. It's forcing us, in essence, to choose 
whether to participate in one, which is fear, and the struggle with the other, which is anxiety. But both are weapons that can be used by we believers to overcome all the sense of dread, angst, and loss that we are facing today. I said something right there. We, we are facing all of this. And instead of using the, the means that God gives us to go forward, the enemy is using those same means to cause us to flee away. When we read earlier in Psalm 34, we read how God is on the side of those who are his redeemed. God is on the side of those who are righteous. God is on the side of those who are being oppressed by wicked uh, individuals, wicked, wicked circumstances, wicked corporations, wicked everything and everybody. Yet God is on the side of those who are oppressed. However you are choosing to define, to define what your oppression may be in this current moment, just know God is fully aware of the oppression that you may be experiencing. Here's the thing. You may be experiencing the oppression, uh, the oppression in the form of an individual, but the reality is there's something behind the individual causing the chaos and the oppression in your life. And that's why Paul takes up this writing in verse number 10. When you read the beginning of chapter 6, you think he's going to be talking about children. And, and, you know, you would think the entire chapter is talking about children. But then he shifts his thought from children obeying your parents. And he shifts to this idea of where we really are in our realm of the spirit. And I'm not trying to over-spiritualize or, or uh, mystify, do anything like that, make this metaphysical. It, it is very real. It's outside the temporal sphere as we understand it. But Paul says these words, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you'll be able to stand, what? Stand firm against who? The schemes of the devil. The schemes of the wicked one, the schemes of the adversary. Why? Because what you are experiencing is a struggle that you in, of on, in and of your own strength are not able to accomplish. That's why Paul says this, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Uh, the first thing Paul wants us to realize that this, this struggle is relational. The struggle is relational. This is a struggle against oppressive leadership that is intent on keeping you entangled in the bondage of sin and disconnected from God. Let me, let me say it again. It, 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 it's a struggle against oppressive leadership that is intent on keeping you entangled in the bondage of sin and disconnected from God. You may be experiencing racial oppression or you believe yourself to be experiencing racial oppression. That, 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 that's not really the, the, the thing. That's not really it. It's really sin being, uh, being carried out uh, in that form of oppression. You might be experiencing financial oppression. Now, as a lot of people are saying here in the black culture that we, we have all these wealth gaps and all these other gaps, that, but the gap really ain't about what it is. It's really all about sin. And, and the evil one and the wicked one, the adversary, the devil, is using this weapon against us because he does not want us to have a relationship with the God who is the creator of the all things, the God who is the provider of all all things to God who is the shepherd that we shall not want. I want y'all to get this. I want you to understand the, the, the struggle is real because the struggle is relational. He doesn't want you to understand. He doesn't want you to see that, yeah, flesh and blood may be the antagonist. <laughs> the physical antagonist of the things that are causing you dread, the things that are causing you angst, the things that are causing you fear and anxiety. There may be a physical agent uh, uh, carrying, carrying that out, but it's really the devil really operating 
behind that. Now, uh, let me clear this, clarify the statement. When I say the devil is operating behind it, the devil has no power. Just, just so you know, the, de the devil has no power. The devil is powerless. But the problem is the devil has influence. The devil has influence. The devil is able to use and manipulate or at least seem to manipulate environments, circumstances, and situations that cause us to experience this crisis that leads us astray from the faith that we are called to live and walk in. So Paul says that the wrestling, this, this struggle, the, the Greek word is gives the idea of a wrestling match where one opponent is trying to overpower the, uh, the other opponent and to, 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 win the, to win the match to win the match you have to pin the other opponent now I know I got some wrestling fans out here I know y'all got some WWE fans out here some WCW I, I could go way back in the day some junkyard dogs some Hulk Hogan y'all like watching the match but see now they, they, they've gotten too fancy they've gotten too full of themselves. They, they didn't get the basic stuff. And, and yes, eventually somebody may pin down the other, but they got to go through a whole lot of other theatrics before the end of the match. Can I tell you something? What you're experiencing is, is right now it's just a whole lot of theatrics before the match is ended. The, the devil is throwing all the theatrical feats, the, the jumps, the flips, all the punches and all of that. And, and giving the illusion that he is winning the match. But the reality is the battle is the Lord's. I don't know about you, but I know the Lord will fight my battle. And if the Lord fights my battle, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I shall not be moved against rulers, against powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Not only is the struggle relational, but the struggle is relevant. The struggle is relevant. What, what do you mean by the struggle is relevant? This is a struggle that is defining the moment that you are experiencing. You can stand and let the, sword, the Lord fight your battle or you can, fail, you can fall and settle for defeat. Jesus on the cross looked out at the crowd that was watching him suffer in his last moments. And as he looked out at the crowd, he noticed individuals jeering. He noticed individuals crying. He noticed soldiers mocking. He was fully cognizant of what was all going around him. And yet, in spite of all that he was experiencing, he still said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He understood the relevance of the moment that he was experiencing. He understood that while he was dying and while he was trying to, trying to, uh, about to give up his last breath and the ghost, he understood that what he was going through was for the greater good. They didn't understand the relevance of his death. Even the two thieves who were beside him on one side and the other did not understand fully who he was or what he was. But one said, I know you didn't do anything wrong. And when you die, remember me in power. Paradise. And Jesus said, today, when I'm gone, you're going to be with me in paradise. He understood the relevance of the moment. And for us, as we experience the struggles in our life, the crises in our life, the, the, the angst, the anxieties, the fears, all that we experience in our life, you got to understand Jesus knows. Oh, yes, he knows just how much we can bear. And now, Jesus understood the relevance of his death and his resurrection to our reconciliation with God. Jesus understood the relevance of his death and his resurrection to our reconciliation with God. And the enemy 
would rather keep you away from God trying to think that you got to do this all on your own when Jesus is saying, I am with you. I am for you. I am that I am. That's why I chose the hymn that I chose to sing this morning. As believers, we should be crying out to God, draw me near to you. Draw me near to you where I can abide under the shadow of your wings. Draw me near to you where your angels can encompass themselves around me and protect me. Draw me near to you to shield me from the fiery darts of the adversary when they come at me. Draw me near to you when the enemy comes in like a flood and tries to cast me out. Draw me near to you so when I stand, I won't be standing on my on a faulty ground of sand, but I'll be standing on the rock, the solid rock of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I know I, I've been struggling. I've been struggling, struggling mentally to try to understand the totality of what this world is experiencing. I've been struggling emotionally to reconcile the realities of the losses that so many people have been experiencing. I've been struggling spiritually to reconcile with the question of why. Why is all this suffering happening? Why is God allowing all of this? I, I've been struggling, but here's the thing. I, I'm glad to know that while the struggle is real, <laughs> the, the conclusion to the struggle is even better. Because Paul writes, and we quote all the time, but I don't we really believe what he writes. For all things work together for the good of those who are the called of God. Because those who are called, he has justified. Those he has justified, he has glorified. That's why he says, take up the full armor, having, stand, having done everything to stand, stand girded with everything that you need to stand against the wickedness of the world and the evil one. Love, I don't know what you're experiencing in this moment. I don't know. But what I do know is that there's a Lord. The Lord, who I know, is with you. The Lord, who I know, knows your struggle is just as real as his. And if he knows your struggle is real, he can bring resolution to your struggle. I close with this statement, this quote from Paul Tillich. Y'all don't know I love Paul Tillich, one of my favorite authors. Christian existential thinker. He says this, suffering and struggles take people beneath the business of life and reminds them they are not who they thought they were. And I don't care where you think you are, who you think you are, you will find struggle and suffering in your space in some way. The old folks used to say, you might not be in a storm, but you might be coming out of one or getting ready to go in one. But either way, to know the Lord is willing to walk with you. The Lord is willing to be with you. The Lord is willing to guide you and lead you beside still waters and green pastures, eventually even through these places where death's shadow is present. He will go with you with his rod and staff, bringing you eventually to this place where a table is laid out before you, and you can eat. After going through the struggle, you can eat. After going through the suffering, you can eat. After going through all the experiences of chaos and existence, existential crisis that you, you've had, whatever it may be, you can go through it and you can sit at the table that has been prepared for you and look at the enemy and say, the Lord had me all the way. And surely, all the ways of my life, all the days of my life, blood, grace and mercy will follow me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the God of our salvation. We thank you that you are our strength. 
you are our might. We thank you that you give us not just armor of protection, but you give us the means of fighting against all that would come against us. And while we're experiencing struggles of every kind, assure us that no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue that rises against us in judgment we will condemn and reassure us that we who are your called out ones we who are your redeemed ones we who are your righteous ones would not be condemned keep us save us in this real struggle is our prayer deliver us in Jesus name we pray amen As I extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, there may be somebody here who does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. You, right now, are in a struggle, and that struggle is causing all kinds of frustrations, all kinds of chaos. And it's not because of what you're doing. I don't want you to feel bad because you're doing wrong or anything like that. No, no, it's because you're not in right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And I extend this invitation to Christian discipleship. Come unto Jesus just as you are. Give yourself to him and let him redeem you. That's the invitation to Christian discipleship. He cried. Jesus Christ came, he died, he rose again from the dead so that you may have a right relationship with God and a right to the tree of life. Your life is not your own. That's you. That's the first invitation. The second invitation is this. If you are looking for a church home, we invite you to become a part of the New Bethel family by our virtual platforms or in person. We welcome you and invite you to become a part of New Bethel. We are a church of a group of believers who are trying to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we're doing our best to be real, relational, encouraging, authentic, and loving. And we want to invite you to be a part of our family. If that's you, respond to either one of those invitations. We invite you to do so. Leave a comment. If you'd like to become a Christian or you've given yourself to Christ, say, I have given myself to Christ. I accept the Christ as Jesus said, leave that comment if that's you. Secondly, if you'd like to join New Bethel, leave a comment saying, I want to join New Bethel. Leave that comment. We invite you to do so. Amen. I give myself away. I give myself away. So I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. If you've responded to any one of those invitations, we thank God for you. We welcome you into the family of Christ, the family of God. We welcome you into the family of New Bethel. Amen. We give God praise. We give God praise. If you that God has moved on someone's heart this morning. Amen. To respond to that invitation. Amen. As we transition now from our worship experience and preaching moment, we transition to our moment of giving. Again, we want to thank all of you who have thought it not robbery to give to uh, New Bethel. And those, you know, last week we had a back to school giveaway we still have some supplies left if you would desire to get some some supplies uh we we're here at the church and we still have some available for your students especially if they're quarantining uh you may want to come get some amen amen again thank all of you
for thinking not robbery to share in uh, the support of the ministry here at New Bethel. There are two ways that you can give primarily to this ministry. The first way is if you like to give to the physical address. You can give to the physical address that should be there on your screen. Amen. Amen. Also, if you like to give by way of Givelify, that is also available and also there on your screen. We thank God for all of you who are thinking it's not robbery to share. In this moment, have your offering ready. Wherever you are, let us prepare to give to the Lord. If you give a physical offering, lift that offering up to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you for giving to us good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. As we give, we give not grudgingly or our necessity. We give cheerfully because you love a cheerful giver. We thank you, Father God, for meeting the local needs here at New Bethlehem. Not just with our utilities, but the activities that we are able to do for outreach missions. Thank you so much. Meet the needs of local members here. But also, Father God, meet the needs of those who are giving, Father God, whatever they may be. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And we thank you for what you are doing. And we're sure enough, thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take the time now. If you're giving virtually, take that time to give. If you're going to bring the offering to the physical church, we will be here receiving. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to thank our musicians for being with us here this morning. Thank all of you who are watching on the various streaming platforms. We appreciate you so much. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to like and share this uh, broadcast across all of your social media. And please join us for all of our weekly activities. On Tuesdays, we have Bible study uh, at noon. We're going through the book of 1 Samuel. We invite you to join us for that. Also, Sundays at 9 a.m., our Bible, uh, church school by way of teleconference. Uh, join us for that every Sunday at 9 a.m. Also, our youth uh, Sunday school at 9.30 uh, by way of Zoom, you can join us for all of those activities. And please, weekly prayer, we invite you to join us every week for prayer, um, beginning at noon on various days of the week. Amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate God. We appreciate you so much for watching this broadcast. Our minds and hearts are clear. Father, we bless you. We thank you that you are the keeper of our soul. Now as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, may your grace, peace, love of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with us now and always. We say amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. Until next week, amen and amen.